Are you looking to start your smart home or wanting to take your current smart home to the next level? In this video, I'll show you exactly what you need to build and to control your smart home with important things to consider along the way and how you and your family may benefit. I'll also tell you why most smart homes aren't smart and how you can avoid this common mistake. And at the end, I'll bring on my wife, Ashley, so you can hear her perspective on how to create a smart home that works for the whole family. On this channel, I cover how tech can make you more productive. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Let's do this. So what is a smart home? I often see people and brands conflating the concepts of connected and smart. These are not the same thing. A device that connects to the internet and that may be controlled by an app or your voice can definitely be helpful. But it's really not that smart if it requires regular manual intervention to make it function. Turning a light on via an app is not that different from turning on a light using a physical switch. In both cases, the light is waiting for you to take action. What makes a light or a lock vacuum, thermostat, etc. smart is when its operation is automated so you don't even have to think about it. Lights turn on and off based on presence in the room and ambient brightness. Locks unlock and lock based on your precise location. Thermostats pause the heating or air conditioning when a door or window opens or when no one is home or sets the perfect temperature before you return and so much more. That doesn't mean app or voice control is not valuable. There are absolutely helpful use cases for those. Tell Roomba to vacuum the kitchen. Okay, I'll tell Roomba to vacuum the kitchen. But an actually smart home is one with smart home automations that just disappear into the background, saving you time and money and increasing your home's comfort and security. I'll give you a practical example of this. When I started planning for this video, I was away from home for one week on vacation with my family. While we were gone, our smart home lights turned on and off at different times in the day to simulate the same behavior of when and where we use lights in our home. This present simulation helped to make our home feel more secure. Additionally, the thermostat turned down the heat and the hot water heater turned off to save us money from unnecessary energy usage. All of this happened in the background without me needing to click into an app or otherwise lift a finger. So how can you make your smart home actually smart? You need two things to start a smart home. A smart home hub, and smart home devices. Let's start with the smart home hub since this may influence the smart home devices that you get. You can think of a smart home hub as the centralized command center that talks to all of your smart home devices and enables you to control them. Well-known smart home hubs include Echo from Amazon, HomePod from Apple, and Nest from Google. With these, smart home control is often associated with the respective voice assistants or apps for controlling the devices in your home. Another option in my smart home hub of choice is Home Assistant. But which one is right for you? There are several things to consider when choosing a smart home hub. First is compatibility. Ideally, you will have one hub that can control all of your smart home devices. If some brands or devices that you own or want to own don't work with your smart home hub, then you may need to use multiple apps to set up and to control your smart home devices and automations. This can lead to a clunky experience with increased cognitive load remembering which hub controls which device. You may also be limited in the automations that you can create if your devices do not all work with the same hub. An example of this would be using Apple HomeKit as your smart home platform, but seeking to automate a front door lock that is incompatible with Apple HomeKit. Second is protocols. Not every device uses Wi-Fi to connect. Other popular protocols include 
Bluetooth, Thread, Z-Wave, and Zigbee. Each protocol has its own strengths and weaknesses depending on the smart home device. I'm not going to do a deep dive on smart home protocols in this video, but the main takeaway is that you want a smart home hub that supports the protocols of your smart home devices. Sticking with our front door example, if your smart lock uses Z-Wave, then you'll need a smart home hub that allows for Z-Wave connectivity. In my home, I have smart home devices that use every type of protocol that I mentioned. Third is cloud-based versus locally controlled hubs. Cloud-based hubs like Amazon, Google, these rely on the cloud for processing your smart home requests and communicating with your smart home devices. Because they are cloud connected, there is data privacy to consider and they require an internet connection to function. Alternatively, you might consider locally controlled hubs like Apple HomeKit or Home Assistant. Locally controlled hubs will communicate directly with the devices inside your home without going through the cloud, so your data is more private. Don't worry though, you can still control devices on a locally controlled hub even when you are away from home. Fourth is ease of setup. Generally, the popular cloud-based hubs like an Echo or Nest device are the easiest to get started with because of their simple setup experience. Just plug in the hub, create or log into your account and start adding smart home devices. This beginner-friendly approach is what makes these hubs so popular. However, there is a trade-off for this simplicity. That brings us to the fifth and final consideration, which is customization. Try to think of something right now that you'd like to automate in your home. Staying with our front door example, maybe you want to auto unlock the front door when you arrive home, but you want to specify the geofence zone around your home, and you want to set a condition that it only auto unlocks when your phone is connected to your home's Wi-Fi network to ensure you are physically on your property. And you want it to send a custom notification when the door was unlocked. Most smart home automations will have a series of conditions like this that you want to be true before the automation begins. In general, the simplicity that makes popular cloud-based hubs easy to set up is what also limits the level of customization and types of conditions in your smart home automations. That may seem like a lot to consider when selecting a smart home hub, so I'll break this down. If you want a hub with the easiest setup, broadest smart home device compatibility, and a capable voice assistant, then look to Amazon and their Echo devices. Just know that you may be limited in the level of customization or conditions that you want in your smart home automations. If you're looking for something still easy to jump into but offers the benefits of local control, then I recommend Apple HomeKit. If you're looking for a locally controlled smart home hub with the broadest compatibility, protocol support, advanced customization options, and you don't mind tinkering, then Home Assistant is probably the best option in my smart home hub of choice. I prefer Home Assistant because of broad compatibility across smart home devices and protocols, local control for privacy and reliability, and smart home automation possibilities that are only limited by my imagination. Seriously, if you can think of it, you can probably do it with Home Assistant. To be clear though, Home Assistant is not as simple to get started with compared with the other options that I mentioned. However, its ease of setup has improved tremendously over the past year with devices like Home Assistant Green, meaning you no longer have to assemble a Raspberry Pi to get up and running. If you're unsure about the learning curve required with Home Assistant, you're in the right place because that's something that I cover on this channel. Let me know in the comments what smart home hubs you're using and what your experience has been. And if you're finding this video helpful so far, give it a like and subscribe to the channel, which will help me generate more content like this. So once you have your smart home hub chosen, it's time to get some smart home devices or to automate the ones that you already own. It's good to choose your hub first since not every device works with every hub, though over time matter will help with this. Most major smart home devices will work across each of the hubs, which is often identified by a badge on the device packaging. Note that you typically won't see a home assistant badge on smart home device packaging, but you can view a list of compatible products on the home assistant website. 
I'll leave a link to that in the video description. Smart home devices include things like light bulbs and light switches, door locks, robot vacuums, thermostats, and much, much more. For anyone completely new to smart home and unsure where to get started, I recommend that you begin your smart home journey with smart lighting. It can be among the easiest to set up and by automating your lights, you can improve your home's ambiance, comfort, security, and possibly save a little time and money. If you're wondering whether smart bulbs or smart switches are best for you, I'll leave a link to my other video on that topic. I think the best way though really to begin is to think of specific pain points in your life that could be solved with a smart home automation. For example, if you always watch TV without a light on, maybe you want to create an automation that turns on the light when you walk into the room, but not if the TV is playing. In this case, you could create this automation using a smart bulb to control the light, a smart plug with energy monitoring to know if the TV is on, and a motion sensor to know when someone entered the room. When considering which smart home devices to buy, I would prioritize those that do not require a cloud connection. That way, you're not reliant on a company to continue to exist or to provide the same features in order for your smart home devices to work. One example of this danger is MyQ garage door openers, which lost some of their smart home features. Zigbee devices are a great way to avoid this pitfall as they create their own network in your home. That doesn't mean you need to avoid Wi-Fi devices completely. I have many fantastic Wi-Fi based devices like the Everything Presence One sensor. Speaking of sensors, these are among the most important smart home devices to add for smart home automations, which brings me to the final topic, how to control your smart home. So you selected your smart home hub and added smart home devices. How do you control this stuff? There are at least four ways to control your smart home. Voice, app, physical controls, and automations. When I got started with smart home years ago, I controlled my entire smart home with my voice. Turn on the dining room lights. While this can be useful, it can quickly become frustrating for family members or guests to figure out how to do something like turn on a light. Today, I use all four ways to control my smart home. There are times when I want to manually adjust something, so an app like a single smart home dashboard can be great for that. Let me know in the comments if you wanna learn more about my smart home dashboard. Other times though, you may want the ability to push a button to turn something on or off or to trigger an automation. Physical controls like a smart home light switch or a customizable button can be super helpful. But as I said earlier, an actually smart home is powered by automations and great smart home automations just disappear in the background so you don't even have to think about it. That's why I mostly rely on automations now to control my smart home. To do this, I have a bunch of sensors around my home that detect things like motion, presence, door or window contact, temperature, humidity, brightness, and even vibration. When the current state of one of these sensors changes, it communicates that another smart home device should perform some action like adjusting the lights, thermostat, and more. And by using these conditions, I can ensure that the automations only run when me and my family want them to. Well, most of the time at least. So speaking of family, I thought it would be great to get my wife Ashley's perspective on what to consider when starting a smart home. Hi, I'm Ashley. So we're talking about starting a smart home and you know firsthand that smart home devices and automations are things that impact everyone in the household. So what's something that you might suggest others keep in mind when they're just starting out? Yes, yeah, so I think what's really important is to remember that starting a smart home, starting with smart home products is something that you are really passionate about, but not necessarily everyone in your home is going to be as passionate about. So it's really important to start maybe with one product, maybe with two, 
and to talk with them about the people in your home. It's not great to send a barrage of products home that nobody knows about except you and you go and install them without letting anybody know. I think, you know, the mantra that comes to me is it's probably better to walk before you run, making sure that smart home is something that everyone in your home can get on board with. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you're gonna be bringing in a lot of smart home gadgets, new ways to control things in your home, you wanna make sure that everyone else is probably on board. And one helpful way to do that may be to just start gradually with one or two devices, one or two automations, before you kind of go all in on your smart home vision. What's maybe a one practical way for someone to go about starting their smart home? I think one practical way is to take some time and think about what is a product that can actually add value to not just you, but to your spouse, your roommate, your children, whoever lives in your home, how would they actually benefit from a product? You see a lot of things online, you know, color changing lights and flashy things um, on a, a smart home channels and websites that just aren't really useful to people like me and to the people probably living in your home with you. Um, I know for me, one thing that you did early on that helped me to see the benefit of smart home products was um, automating our washer and dryer. Mm -hmm. So basically I got a message on my phone when um, a washer or dryer load ended. It was also announced on the Echo devices in our home at times that worked for the people in the home. And that was really useful because our washer and dryer are located in an area of the home that is difficult to access. I don't pass by it a lot. So um, the message was really a helpful way for me to see that laundry was ending. Um, maybe I needed to know before I left the house or um, before something else was happening that helped me to get on board with Smart Home. Yeah, so maybe thinking of a current challenge that maybe you face in your home or a way that you can make something easier than it currently is. Sounds like that could be a good way to gain some support or enthusiasm for going about starting your smart home. Um, what's any other tips that you might suggest uh, for someone when starting off in the smart home? Yes, uh, I have a lot of tips, but I'll start with one. You may have to do a follow-up video. <laughs> the most important tip is any relationship benefits from open communication. That mm -hmm. goes for smart home or something else, of course, um, but for smart home especially. I think um, we've been talking about it, but you will be really passionate about smart home. Most likely you will be living with people who are not passionate about smart home. If you are, that's great. But if you're not, it's just important to always be communicating, hey, this is something I've been looking into. I think it could add value for these reasons. Have a discussion about it before it magically appears in your home and the people in your home don't know how to use it, don't know how to work it are simply frustrated with the new product. Um, I think everyone can only benefit by being on the same page. Well, it sounds like we might need to do a follow-up on this to hear more of the, the tips or things to keep in mind <laughs> to make smart home work for everyone else in your home. Let me know in the comments below if that's something that you'd like to see. We covered a lot, including what you need to build and to control your smart home, and how to build a smart home that works for you and for the other people that you live with. Let me know in the comments what questions you have for me or Ashley as you look to start or expand your smart home. If you're interested in the smart home devices that we use every single day in our home, you'll wanna check out the video here. Hit the like button if you found this helpful and subscribe to the channel for tech reviews and tutorials that help you become more productive. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> I, you're better at this than I. You should be the main. <laughs>